Hallelujah. How's everybody tonight? Are you blessed and highly flavored? Praise God. Well, if you're blessed and highly flavored, then you'll be drawn to the presence of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Master. Ah, thank you. Oh, Psalm 127. So you heard that our governor is lifting everything, right? Amen. I, I don't know when this is supposed to start. Does it, or did it start already? July 1st? Praise God. So everything's being lifted here. That means we're going to get flooded. We just got to put a hedge of protection against the Democrats. We need to give them a penetrating prayer booklet as they come through the borders. <laughs> Hallelujah. Psalm 127. Thank you, Master. One of the things the Holy Spirit has been bringing up, you know, a disciplined life is a victory life. Amen? And, and in that, that he has requirements. You know, the, the Word tells us to, we should be seeking him first thing every morning. In other words, Lord, let my voice be heard from you every morning first. Amen? So we know that prayer is essential. Praise and worship is essential. There's many things that he has shared with us that is essential to maintain his presence. And then there's areas where we must learn to protect our territory. So many times people don't even know what territory they have. See, God's granted each and every one of us a place of territory. Territory also includes atmosphere. And, and so in this, if you're not consistent in protecting your territory and pr you can't protect the atmosphere and so so many times the enemy loves to creep in in certain multiple ways an individual that isn't consistent will not maintain that hedge of what we call protection amen so there's an area why because things must be consistent they must consistently be activated it's like turning on something all the time what you see in the physical is also a parallel spiritually. And in Psalm 127 and verse 1, he says very specifically, unless the Lord builds the house, the, they what? They labor in vain who build it. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. It is vain for you to rise up early and to sit up late and to eat the bread of sorrows. For so he gives his beloved sleep. Again, unless the Lord builds the dwelling place, they labor. They do it in vain. In other words, if it is not utilized by kingdom principles, it's done in vain. Amen? So in this, he says, and if <laughs> the watchman that protects the dwelling place stays awake to warn individuals, it's in vain. Why? Because he's trying to protect something that was built by carnality and not by the Spirit of God. Anything that's not built by the Spirit of God, anything, anyone that's trying, listen, let me share something with you specifically. Things in all kinds of things. God blesses us. He wants us to prosper. He wants to enjoy life. Amen. But there's an area where he doesn't want us to just seek his hand. He wants us to seek his, his face. Amen. And so, so many times when people just seek his hand or they stop seeking his face, something begins to happen. There's an unbalance there. So what happens then when people stop seeking his face and only seek his hand, they begin to serve the blessings instead of the blesser. And when those things begin to happen in an individual's life, they fall out of order. 
It's in vain. And not only that, it's not protected. Does everybody get it? See, what you build, you protect. What he builds, he protects. Amen? So we've got to stay in that air arena and, and keep focused on that area that we don't want to labor in vain. We don't want to build things in vain. We want the integrity of Christ to build everything. All everything should be done by the principles of the kingdom. Amen? Hallelujah. So, if it's not built upon the kingdom principles, then it's currently built. Amen? <laughs> it's built by carnal or what we call worldly principles with selfish ambitions. There is no divine protection then. None. Anything. Even in your, let me share with you. That's why he says, seek the kingdom of God. All things will be added. Acknowledge me in all of your ways. Amen. Why? You're always putting them first. Anything you don't put them first on is not divinely protected. Amen. So all of our purchases, everything we do. How many of y'all know God's tightening things up? What's he trying to do? Shut every door. He says, make no place for the devil. Make no place for the devil. Everything you and I do must be kingdom focused. Must be directed. It doesn't mean you don't go on vacations. It doesn't, it has nothing to do with that. Hey, if the Lord says, hey, it's time to let's go. How many know God goes with you on vacation? Amen. He can go with you on the, holder, on the what do you call it, the roller coaster. He screams louder than I do. But anyways, in, in this, uh, you know, he, he wants to have fun with us, but he wants to be a part of every part of our being, our life, everything we do. No matter, if you shut him out, it's not protected. Amen? Anything that you shut him out, well, Lord, you know, and, and anything you forgot to invite him in, you better repent for. Lord, I'm sorry I didn't invite you in. I mean, you know, it's like not inviting a friend with you all the time. I mean, he's the one that created you. So anything that's not built by him is built in vain and is not divinely protected. Does everybody get it? So one of the things he's trying to do is to bring us to that place of, first of all, acknowledging. We've got to begin to acknowledge these things. That's why he brings these up into remembrance. Some of these things we've known about multiple times, you'll hear about teachings we've, we've remembered before, but they haven't been reactivated enough. And that's what he does. Paul wrote multiple letters to remind them or stir them up all the time <clears throat> so that they could get back in position and so they can be attentive and be more detailed to things, be more sensitive. People are more sensitive to themselves than what's going around them sometimes. Hello? In Matthew 7. So he wants to bring us to a place where we're not only we're protecting our territory and also protecting the atmosphere. Matthew 7. Now think about this. When God created Adam and Eve, where did he put them? In a protected territory. Amen? You may say, well, the serpent was in Well, the, Adam and Eve had dominion over the serpent. <laughs> so any place that's associated with your territory, you have dominion over. The first territory you got to maintain is you. Because if this isn't maintained, you're not going to maintain anything else. Amen? That's why he says, seek me first every day. So there's things that we're to do, and we, we know by discipline and consistency to keep it up. Everything that we do, territory, territory, we got to protect our territory. This is the first territory. Why? It's his temple. Then there's another territory, where you live. Amen? Your fellowship, what you're associated with. This is your territory also. These people are all a part of your territory. Everyone associated here is a part of your territory. Your family is a part of your territory. Does everybody get it? So these are territories that God has given us. We are accountable and responsible. What? To intercede every day. We're to be a watchman or a watchwoman. Every day. And it's oversee these things all the time. Wherever you go. Even the gym I go to is a part of the territory God has given me. No matter where he sends me, it's, a, it's always expanded in territory. 
You know, people don't realize. Man, I even play for the, I pray for the employees at Dunkin' Donuts. That's my territory. Can I tell you? I got a lot of strange territories he's given me. CVS, Dunkin' Donuts, Publix and Okoe, uh, Walgreens. Where else are you telling me? Vitamin Shop, thank you. Vitamin Shop. Every time, uh, every, anytime fitness. So those are territories God has given me, but he's expanding them. AutoZone. Lowe's. It's my second home. All of, and all the employees, every day, he has me intercede for them. That's a part of my territory. And it's amazing how many places still remember you. Even when you go in there, of course, you know, when you go there enough times, they remember you. Heck, there's, there's this one guy I check out every day at Lowe's. He knows my card. He knows my phone number. He knows everything. about. I, I don't have to ask him nothing. Tax exempt, veterans, he knows it all. Hallelujah. Matthew 7. Uh, so we have territory that we must be protecting. Amen. You know, and sometimes you don't even realize why God has you praying for that territory because he's trying to get something done there. Just think, if everybody would start praying more for their territories, how much more things would happen. It all starts with prayer. Amen? All starts with prayer. Oh, glory. Matthew 7, I'm getting there. In verse 24. Hallelujah. Let's speak it together. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him a wise man who built his house on the rock. In other words, that's kingdom principle and on the anointing. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. Now, in other words, he's protecting his territory. Why? On kingdom principles, what God says. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not keep them, doesn't do them, doesn't maintain them, doesn't activate them, will be a foolish man or woman who built his house on sand. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it fell, and great was its fall. Wow. So we want to be a wise builder, not a foolish builder. And remember, everything must be according to pr kingdom principles. Acknowledging him first. You know, so many times things will come, man, you know, you get, especially when you get sideswiped with stuff. We've got to remember to step back. Hold everything. I want to reconnect that. I've just been sideswiped <laughs> with all kinds of stuff. I don't know, you know... I'm not going to make any decision. Remember, when you don't know what to do, what do you do? Nothing. Nothing. You wait. You know, so many times people go, well, what about God? Listen, God is God. You're waiting for him to tell you what the heck to do. Run, fight, whatever. Do this, do that. No, don't do this now. Wait. Lay it down, whatever it is he's telling you to do. So when he tells us something to do, he always confirms it. That's why counsel, correction, and direction produces protection, doesn't it? Amen? He confirms everything with us, no matter what. He never doesn't confirm something. He always confirms something. Why? Because he wants us protected. What does the word say in Psalm 91? We have that prayer of protection in here. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High, hello, abides under the shadow of the Almighty. I'd rather be under the shadow of the Almighty than the other shadows I used to be under. Hello. Praise God. In Acts 17. See, so when you go out no matter where you are, angels are with you. Amen? 
There may be times you don't even realize that people are freaked out because God may open their eyes and see what is behind you. Remember, we're under the shadow of the Almighty. Somebody may see an angel behind you. Somebody may see something. You know, sometimes people want to say something to you and they can't. I remember this testimony from this guy who had been shot three or four times and the bullets never touched him. They fell down. Boom. 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 And in, in the spirit, he saw an angel putting his hand there and catching every bullet that was going towards him. This years ago, I heard this testimony. So, you know, you don't know. I, I mean, they've got uh, the cameras on streets, and I don't know if you've ever seen it, to where uh, this uh, woman was pushing uh, a baby in a carriage or whatever, in a stroller thing. And, uh, and out of nowhere, uh, a, a bus made a turn. And she was right in front of the bus. All of a sudden, this light from the corner came and grabbed her and brought her across the street. Next thing she knew, she was standing. They had to slow down the camera so slow to catch this movement of light that picked this woman up and the baby carriage and brought her right across the street and put her right on the sidewalk. That was an angel of the Lord. That one would have been slow, not so well. And the baby was right with her. So God has a way of protecting us. As long as you're protecting the things that he's given you, he'll protect you. Amen? No matter how it looks, no matter how it feels, and no matter how you think about it. Hello? Because if you keep thinking about it, you're going to walk right out of his protection. And that's what the enemy tries to do is to get us to walk out of the protection of God. And he starts throwing all kinds of stuff at us, fear, anxiety, stress, worry, offense, all of these things. People don't even know it. They're walking out of God's protection. Grumbling, complaining. That's one of, those are things that really will just throw you out of God's protection. Our mouth. Hallelujah. Matthew 7. Are we there? Oh, no. Where do we go? Acts 17. Thank you. Verse 22. Then Paul stood in the midst of the uh, uh, Areopagus and said, Men of Athens, I perceive in all things you are very what? You know, oh, you're religious. They had a form of acts. They were just acting about religion. They saw all of these pagans that they were worshiping. We see that you're very religious. You know, and this thing, I think Paul was mocking them. I see you're really religious. Yeah. You don't know nothing. <clears throat> in verse 23. As for as for I was passing through the considering the objects of your worship, objects of your worship. And I even found an altar in this inscription, so there was still an altar that they were worshiping, right? It was an object. But in it there was an unknown God. So they were even worshiping the unknown God. Does everybody get this? But there's still an idol there. Therefore, the one whom you worship without knowing, him I'm going to proclaim to you. So they, can you imagine that? They probably had a 500 of these things all over the place. They're walk, he's walking through the city, and there's all people worshiping all of these idols. They got statues of every kind of thing. And then there's a, a, a place there, an altar that says the unknown God. And he's like, well, let me tell you about the unknown ones. <laughs> you, you think you know about all the rest of them. Let me tell you about the unknown one. God, in verse 24, God who made the world and everything in it, since he is the Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in temples made with what? Hands. Nor is he worshipped with men's hands as though he needed anything, since he gives to all life, breath, and all things. And he has made from one blood every nation of men to dwell on all the face of the earth and has determined their pre-appointed times and boundaries of their dwellings. This is their territories. So that they should seek the Lord and hope that they might grope for him and find him, though he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, uh, as also some of your own poets have said, for we are also his own offspring. Therefore, since we are the offspring of God, we ought not think that the divine nature is like gold or silver <laughs> or stone, something shaped by 
art and man's devising. Truly these times of ignorance God has overlooked, but now commands all men everywhere to repent because he has appointed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man whom he has ordained. He has given assurance of this to all by raising him from the dead. Boundaries of their dwellings. These are called territories. We're to be defenders and protectors of our designated territories. Again, the religious stuff is just objects of, of what they're worshiping, but they're re really not protecting the territory because those objects are called accursed items. Hello. Job 1. This is the employment section. Hallelujah. Oh, happy days. Protecting your territory. If you're not protecting your territory, you're not protecting your atmosphere. Amen. In Job 1 verse 1. Let's speak it together. There was a man in the land of Oz whose name was Job. And that man was blameless and upright, and one who feared God and shunned evil. And seven sons and three daughters were born to him. Also his possessions were 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camel, 500 yoke of oxen, 500 female donkeys, and a very large house household, that this man was the greatest of all the people of the East. In other words, he was wadded. Amen. Very wealthy. Very wealthy. And his sons would go and, and feast in their houses each on his appointed day and would send and invite their three sisters to eat and drink with them. So every day they went to a different relative's house. And they partied and drank and enjoyed all the good things. And so it was when the days of feasting had run their course that Job would send and sanctify them and he would raise rise early in the morning and offer burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, it may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Thus Job did regularly. So what did he do? He got up early and he sacrificed. He did what? He sacrificed. He knew that he had to protect everyone. So he offered up to the Lord. He prayed. He sacrificed. And he shed blood. So that was blood upon everything. Verse 6. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. Those are the angels. And Satan also came among them. And the Lord said to Satan, from where do you come? And so Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro on the earth and from walking back and forth on it. Then the Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? That there is none like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man who fears God and shuns evil. Let me tell you, that just tore into Satan's heart. Ripped him apart. God was setting him up. Verse 9. So Satan answered the Lord and said, oh yeah? Does Job fear God for nothing? Have you not made it what? Hedge around him, around his what? His household, around all that he has on every side. You have blessed the work of his hands. His possessions have increased in the land. Man, he was jamming. Why? Because he protected his territory by the sacrifices of animals and acknowledgement of the Lord. He built altar to God. He prayed and he shed the blood. Over his children, his possessions, everything that he owned. And you know what happened? Things just increased. And the Lord said to Satan, behold. No. In verse 11. But now stretch out your hand and touch all that he has. And he will surely curse you to your face, he said. This is Satan. 
And the Lord said to Satan, Behold, all that he has is yours in your power. Only do not lay a hand on his person. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord. Now the first thing Satan began to do is destroy his cattle, his sacrifices. Does everybody get it? Why? Because he was trying to beat down the hedge of protection. Now the hedge again was not hedges. They weren't greenery. Amen. It wasn't a fence and it wasn't a wall. It was a protection of God Almighty. Nothing can come against God Almighty. Amen. You can't have a better protection than God Almighty. <laughs> but see, people are still, they don't hold on to those things. They still think carnally. So, you know, and, and don't get me wrong. We have a physical arena, that, a territory that we must protect. And we have a spiritual arena that we must protect. Amen. If God chooses to allow something to come through the, the spiritual, uh, spiritual arena into the physical arena, just shoot them. Hallelujah. Then you ain't got nothing to worry about. That's why everybody should be armed, physically and spiritually. Hello? So anyways... <laughs> The sacrifice of praise and the applying of the blood of Christ protect our territories and all of our possessions and all the people we're praying for. Amen? Now remember something that's vitally important. Obedience brings protection. Amen? Obedience brings what? Protection. Divine order is obedience. Say it. Divine order is obedience. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. Psalm 34. Hallelujah. Protecting your territory is, prote is protecting your atmosphere. You know, you don't need to really shoot anybody. You just cast out the devil and they'll fall right down, you know. <laughs> Shooting somebody's always just back up. You know, I still don't understand why the police are told shoot to kill. I, that's one thing I don't like. You know, when they're, they're out there doing whatever, they always shoot. I mean, why not shoot the person in the leg, you know? If you got to shoot someone, why try to kill them? You know, it just doesn't make sense to me. But apparently they think that they need to kill them or they're going to be killed. Now, don't get me wrong. In the circumstance to that degree, sometimes you got to kill somebody, or, you know, or you're going to get killed. I mean, if I saw some individual raping a child, I may kill that person. I will, I'm, and if the Lord didn't want me to, I'm sure he would hold me back. But in that arena where you get in the flesh and you see something that is just ridiculous, off the wall, horrible and horrifying. It's a terrible thing to be watching someone, hurting someone. You know, I don't know if you saw that on on the uh, news or not, but there was, a, in fact, they're trying to bring all kinds of stuff up because there was a girl that was getting stabbed outside and a police officer shot and killed the girl that was stabbing her. Now they're bringing this whole thing up. Of course, they're always trying to bring racial stuff up. There was two black sisters. One was trying to kill the other. And she was out to stab this girl and the police officer shot and killed her because he was right there. There was a big ruckus going on in the front lawn in this neighborhood. And now they're trying to charge the officer with all kinds of stuff, but there's so many witnesses there that, you know, but these are the, you know, democratic places that are anti-gun, anti-anything, anti to do with protecting yourself. They don't want you protected. In fact, they're not going to protect you. That's why people are arming up. But we must be spiritually armed, first of all, and number one all. Spiritually armed. We must be spiritually armed and dangerous and everything. And if we're connected and filled with the Spirit of God and we're doing what we're supposed to do, obedient according to the words 
and according to the principal, uh, the uh, principles of Christ Jesus, according to expressing his integrity in warfare and the way we're supposed to warfare, you're protected. No matter what. And you know, and even if something occurs, look at it, it doesn't matter. So you get sick, okay, praise God. The Lord says, look at if you've done what I've asked you to do, I'm going to raise you up anyways. Sometimes be, people get sick because they need a rest. You know, but never blame God for your sickness. Oh, the Lord let me get sick. I must, must be my martyrism that I'm supposed to do. To. No, man. No, that's not how it's supposed to be. I, one day I saw this dude on TV, uh, and they were interviewing somebody, and he was some dude with a collar priest-like thing. And he took a vow of poverty. I wanted to, what an idiot. Obviously, he doesn't read the Word of God, even though he, spoke, he dresses like a religious man. But he didn't read the Word of God. I took a vow of poverty. I was like, man, don't tell nobody that, you idiot. God gave his life and life abundantly, not poverty. He's trying to get people out of poverty. That's what religion does, puts people in poverty. They think they, they become self-martyrists. And they think that their self-sacrifices in, in those places is going to please God. No, that's all he wants is your heart and your relationship. Amen? Psalm 34, verse 1. Let's speak it. I will bless the Lord when I feel like it. All the time. His praise shall be continually in my mind. No, in my mouth. Because what you speak is what you hear, right? Hallelujah. Praise God. You know, now you're hearing that. You, you know what? That keeps your mind clear. Verse 2, my soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. So praise and repentance should be continually on your lips. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. It should continually come out of your mouth. Second Peter chapter 1. What are we trying to do? Protect our territories. Verse 2, let's speak it. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge. In the what? In the knowledge. What does the word say? My people are what? Destroyed for lack of knowledge. So will that, will that cause an individual to walk out of the protection of God? Yes. See, that's where the enemy tries to bring in and compromise. He likes to exchange the truth for, and water down the truth. You know, I've heard many people tell me, oh, God knows my heart. Puke. Yeah, he knows our heart. But do we know our heart? You know, but he knows our heart. So people use this as an excuse not to do the things that they're supposed to do. It's called lazy and slumber. Amen? And the world calls them sluggards also sloth. They become sloths. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of our God and Jesus our Lord. As his divine power has given up to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises. Those great and precious promises is covenant for me and you. Amen? And that's why it must be activated. That knowledge must be activated all the time in us. That through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. The knowledge of Christ. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. They're misled. They're moved out of protection. Why? Because they don't know the truth. You know, it's amazing to me how... I don't want to mention individuals or anything, but we were going to send a prayer book to someone so they could begin to read it to someone because this person couldn't read. 
And uh, when they realized that we were going to send them a prayer book, they were like, I don't want any of this scripture. I thought, man, these people claim to be a Christian. That's what Catholicism does to people, you know. They think they're Christians. Well, they really don't. I knew when I was a Catholic, I didn't know what the heck a Christian was. I was just a Catholic. You know, when you, they ask you, are you Christian, Catholic, what are you? I was, are you I'm stupid? I don't know. I would call it Catholic. Because I didn't know anything else, you know. I didn't know the power of God. I didn't know that you can get filled with the Spirit of God. I didn't know any scriptures. I just knew they asked for money all the time. And they and, and you did repentance. You had to say so many prayers to get to get forgiveness. Twenty five push ups, run around the church and clean the toilets. You're forgiven. First Peter chapter five. Verse 5. Likewise, you younger people, submit yourselves to your older people, elders, more mature. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another. That means respect one another. And be clothed with humility. For God resists the proud. So will God lift the protection of the proud? Yes. Why? Because pride says, I can do it. Amen? I don't need to do the scriptures. I don't need, I can do it all on my own. Me, myself, and I, the trinity of the devil. God resists the proud but gives grace or the plan of escape and protection to the humble. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time, casting your cares upon him for he cares for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. But he can't devour you unless he gets to you. Amen? So we need that protection. We must maintain a humble heart. We must resist him in faith. Ephesians 6. And we must not be anxious. Hallelujah. Ephesians 6.10. Let's speak it. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the what? Whole, whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the trickery of the devil. You know, I don't, it's amazing to me how many people still don't get dressed with the full armor of God. And you can tell. Sometimes they forget their belt. And they walk around. You know, or their helmets on backwards, you know. And you can see their continence is not right. Hallelujah. Is everybody okay? Put on a whole armor God that you can outwit the devil so he doesn't outwit you. Verse 12, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. See, one of the things the enemy wants you to do is compromise so you don't get dressed and prepared. Oh, but I'm late for work. Let me tell you, God will pray. Don't worry about it. You put God first in anything, and you can still get dressed while you're driving. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Gosh, Lord, I got up late. Fill me, dress me, possess me. Woohoo! You know, whatever. Verse 13. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand the attacks in the evil day and having done all to stand. Stand, therefore, having girded your waist with the what? Truth. So if they don't have no truth, they're always tripping. Having put on the breastplate of righteousness. Having shod your feet with the gospel of preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the what? Now you got to see this. Above all, take the shield of faith, which you will be able to quench all fiery darts of the wicked one. Is that protection? 
Yes. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in tongues. Why? Because it builds you up. Being watchful to this end, even with all perseverance and supplications for all the saints. The shield of faith is a protector. Praying in the Spirit is also what builds you up. Remember, the first territory is you. Amen? You. You protect your, your, the territory and the territory around you and where you go and the associates. You're protecting the atmosphere. That's where the word says, bind a strong man before you enter and plunder the evil one. So we bind the strong man wherever we go. And Joshua 7. Everybody there? Let's speak it. Then Joshua tore his clothes and fell on the earth, to the earth on his face before the ark of the Lord. Before where? The ark of the Lord, which was his presence. Remember, they used to carry the ark everywhere for God's protection. It was his presence. Then remember, the ark was stolen. God let them to steal it. And when they brought the ark in, in, into the pagan places, all of their statues were always falling down because the Ark of the Covenant was there. They couldn't handle God's presence. Then they, then they tried to off and give it to somebody else. Everybody was trying to off the Ark because wherever it went, it was destroying. God's presence was ripping the places apart. Until they finally brought it back and then David went and got it. And even one of David's good friends died because he touched the Ark because he wasn't cleansed. Because God's presence was holy and righteous. So there was no sacrifices for anyone when they were carrying it. This time they stopped. Okay, we ain't doing this no more. I think they went so many paces or whatever, and they sacrificed again all the way home. They weren't taking no chances. Seven steps, stop, kill something. <laughs> we ain't doing this again, you know. <laughs> I, they were all, the fear of God hit them all. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. So, in verse 7. And Joshua said, Alas, Lord, God, why have you brought this people over the Jordan at all to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites, to destroy us? All that we had been content and dwelt on the other side of the Jordan. Man, when things happen, everybody always thinks about going back. And the Lord Oh, Lord, what shall I say when Israel turns us back before the enemies? For the Canaanites and all the inhabitants of the land will hear it and surround us and cut off our name from the earth. Then what will you do for your great name? So the Lord said to Joshua, get up. <laughs> get off your face and get up. Why do you lie thus on your face, he says. He said, Israel has sinned and they have also transgressed my covenant when I commanded them. For they have even taken some of the accursed things and have both stolen and deceived, and they have also put it among their own stuff. Therefore the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies, but turn their backs before their enemies, because they have become doomed to destruction. Neither will I be with you any more, unless you destroy the accursed from among you. See, people are allowing accursed items into their home and their territories. It's our responsibility to break every curse off of everything. Lord, everything I've purchased and anything has been donated, I pray for all total freedoms and brought on the campuses, into the homes, or any of our, anybody's private home. Lord, we break that curse off and cast that spirit out into the pit. Cleanse it with the blood. Now, there are certain things that you can cleanse and there are certain things you must throw out. Amen? I mean, if you've got a dragon in your house, you want to throw it out. Amen? Things to that degree, accursed items, liquor, cigarettes, all of those things are accursed items. For some of us, some of our old pictures were accursed items. That was one of the first things the Lord said, get rid of them. Especially all the partying pictures after I got saved. Oh, this is what I used to be like. Look at this. Get rid of it, you know. But now I'm born again, you know. But I was young and stupid and, you know, didn't realize it. And the Lord says, get rid of it. So I had boxes of pictures of, anyways. It wasn't good. But he said, get rid of it. Anything old, get rid of. 
Anything that was associated with my old life, get rid of. And so what happened with Aaron? Okay, where are we at now? Uh, he says, uh, uh, 13, let's go to. Get up, sanctify the people, and say, sanctify yourselves for tomorrow, because thus says the Lord God of Israel, there is an accursed thing in your midst. O Israel, you cannot stand before your enemies until you get, take away the accursed thing from among you. In the morning, therefore, you shall be, be brought according to your tribes, and it shall be that the tribe which the Lord takes shall come according to the families, and the families which the Lord takes shall come by households, and the household which the Lord takes shall come man by man. Then it shall be that he who is taken with the accursed thing shall be burned with fire. He and all that he has, because he has transgressed the covenant of the Lord, and because he has done a disgraceful thing in Israel. Now that's pretty intense. I mean, we'd all be cooked, you know. Thank God for Jesus. But when you know the truth, what you're doing then is when you have accursed items on, in your territory, in your homes, that protection is now severed. There's an open door. Amen? So Joshua, in verse 16, arose early in the morning and brought Israel by their tribes, and the tribe of Judah was taken. And he brought the clan of Judah and took the family of Zer Zerites, and he brought the family of Zerites man by man, and Zebdi and was taken, and then he brought all the rest of them. And in verse 19, and Joshua said to Achan, my son, my son. Somebody see this? My son, I beg you, give glory to the Lord God of Israel and make confession to him. And tell me now what you have done. Do not hide it from me. And Achan answered Joshua and said, indeed, I have sinned against the Lord God of Israel. And this is what I have done. When I saw among the spoils a Babylonian beauty, uh, a beautiful Babylonian garment, 200 shekels of silver, and a wedge of gold weighing 50 shekels, I coveted them and took them, and they are hidden in the earth in the midst of my tent with the silver under it. So Joshua sent messengers, and they ran to the tent, and there it was hidden in this tent with the silver under it. And they took them from the midst of the tent, brought them to Joshua and to all the children of Israel, and laid them before the Lord. Then Joshua and all Israel with him took Achan, the son of Zerah, the silver, the garment, the wedge of gold, his sons, his daughters, his oxen, his donkeys, his sheep, his tent, and all that he had, and they brought them to the valley of Acre. And Joshua said, Why have you troubled us? The Lord will trouble you this day. So all Israel stoned him with stones, and they burned them with fire after they had stoned them with stones. He lost everything, including his whole family. See, it doesn't just affect you personally, but everyone else. Everyone else. So this is an area where we want to continue to protect the territory and the atmosphere. You know, one of the things is I really like to do, when I leave home, my praise and worship is still on in my house. I want to keep the atmosphere clean. And, and if somehow it goes off, you know, whatever, I can sense when I come home, man, I need to put that music band on, or I just clean the house out. But you should clean your house out, and sometimes every, anywhere else you've been that you've brought home or whatever, you should clean it out spiritually every day. Amen? Is everybody okay? 2 Corinthians 10. Remember, you can be the accursed item in your own home. Amen? People can be their own idol. Second Corinthians 10, verse 4. Verse 3, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. What's a stronghold? Memory lie, things that we've agreed with. Casting down arguments and it's 
uh, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ, and being ready to punish, punish all disobedience when your obedience is what? Fulfilled. So, in other words, can you punish, can you attack without submitting to God? Submit to God and then what? Resist the devil. So, again, there's an area where the enemy attacks us, entices us with temptations and all kinds of stuff to try, us, try to draw us away or out of protection by agreeing with something that's going to break that protection. Amen? Even in your thoughts. Manipulation of temptational thoughts that move people from the protection of God. And Galatians chapter 5, or Galatians chapter 5. Phones can be an accursed item. Flesh book can, is definitely a cursed place. It should only be used. Never place your opinions on there. Show something that's exposing the enemy. People don't want to hear your hearts. Hello? Some people, that's all they got. Cut it out. You've got that much to say, go to the Lord, not to the phone. People don't realize they open the doors by just doing all of these things. Why? Because when you begin to expose a lot of yourself, the enemy has access to certain things. Now he knows what you're thinking, and now he's able to attack you in those. What's he trying to do then? Because you just promoted it all over Facebook, Fleshbook. Now what's he going to do? He's going to try to bring things he knows exactly what to do. He sends people. He Facebooks people back with you. He entices someone else. Next thing you know, the person's offended. See, he got it, didn't he? Now he's able to start stepping. He's drawn that person out of protection. Does everybody understand that? Be careful. Amen? Don't be an emotional Facebooker. Expose the enemy. That's it. Don't tell people about you. God knows about you. That's the only one who needs to know about you. Amen? Is everybody okay? I didn't get a lot of amens on that. I was wondering what's going on here. <laughs> you flesh bookers. <laughs> Verse 19. Now the works of the flesh, hallelujah, are Facebook. No. <laughs> Hallelujah. The works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I told you in time past, that those that practice, practice, practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Why? They're practicing these things and have moved them right out of the protection of God. Amen. Anything according with the flesh. If you're an individual that's practicing the things of the flesh, you're not in God's protection. Amen. We should be God chasers, not man chasers. Second Corinthians six. Protecting your territory. In verse 11. Here's a guideline for protection. Maintaining God's protection. Oh, Corinthians, we have spoken openly to you. Our heart is wide open. Verse 12. You are restricted by, you're not restricted by us, but you are restricted by your affections or your emotional confusion. Verse 13. Now in return for the same I speak to you as children, you also be open. Do not be what? Unevenly yoked with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? And what communion has light with darkness? And what accord is Christ with Belial? What part is a believer with an unbeliever? And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? 
For you are the temple of the living God, as God has said. I will dwell in them. I will walk among them. I'll be their God. They'll be my people if they do what? Come out from among them. Be separate, says the Lord. Don't touch what's just unclean so I can protect you. And I'll receive you. I'll be a father to you. And you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. You know, people don't realize that sometimes they get emotionally yoked with someone. And, you know, they're, they're, listen, we're to love all people. Amen? We're not to hate people. We're just to hate the things of wickedness. But don't go beyond the boundaries. Those boundaries will move you out of protection. Because those emotional things just move you right out. Now you're doing things you're not supposed to be doing. Now you're communicating and things you're not, now you're supporting something you're not supposed to be supporting. It's amazing in how many people, how many women I've come across that have married somebody that's in jail by the male. Phenomenal to me. And then, of course, they went off divorce afterwards. Just because they've been unevenly yoked. I was all a lust affair, not a love affair. Many people I've talked, many women, and then they're in torment. Again, th this is where my people are destroyed for what? Lack of knowledge. Lack of knowledge. You know, God has given us the knowledge. We have the Holy Spirit. Amen? Go to 1 John chapter 2 and we'll close here. Verse 15, we've heard this plenty of times. Do not what? Love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the love, lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is what? Passing away. Amen? It's passing away. It's not passing out. It's passing away. Amen? Amen? In this, we'd like it to pass out so we can take some dominion here. Give us some time to attack and remove and, you know, the heavenly taking our, we take things by force. And that's warfare. But it says the world is passing away and the loss of it, but he who does the will of God abides forever. So if you're doing the, truly doing the will of God, if you're truly acknowledging them, if you're making them first in your life, if you have a true relationship, you're under that protection. Amen. Anything that is allowed in is for training. You know, everything that usually happens, we bring on ourselves anyways, you know. <laughs> you can't blame someone. I mean, what we might have said, did, or whatever, or Facebooked, or whatever it was, we brought it on ourselves. Touched something, agree, uh, agreed with something that we shouldn't have. Verse 18. Little children, as the last hour, and as you've heard, the Antichrist has come, and even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it's the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were none of, none of them were of us. But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. Because the Spirit leads us. But if you're not filled with the Spirit and you're not connected... You're going to be led by your emotions. You're going to be led by these goofy thoughts and so forth. Again, one of the things the enemy is trying to do is get us out of that protection. There is a territory that we are responsible to upkeep and protect. This is the first one. You. Then the others. Why? Because there's many people that don't know the truth. And if we can protect them until they come to the truth, that's awesome. Amen? If we can help assist in that area, and it can only be done in prayer. I pray everyone at Dunkin' Donuts gets saved every day. Get them, Lord. You know, CVS and all the other places, Publix, even though because I don't wear a mask, they look at me funny. That's okay. They're on my hit list. I got a spiritual hit list that I pray for. Get them. Salvation. You're coming in one way or another. <laughs> Hallelujah. But, you know, we got to be aggressive in the spirit, man. 
We can't be wimps. There's enough wimps going around. People aren't fighters. They're runners. They're wannabes and not willing to be. They got a big talk but no walk, no fight. You got to be a fight. That's why he says, fight a good fight of faith. Amen? Praise God. Thank you, Lord, for your word. We are honored and blessed. I pray each and every one here got revelation to protect the territories that God has given us. That we may not only protect the territory, but the atmosphere. Be discerning, sensitive, specific, and detailed. In Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. Praise God. Give somebody a hug and tell them you did.